What's good with the YouTube? Y'all already know, Big Flocker with a comics perspective. And I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with a little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future fire content. And as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, Mexican Mafia Pictures Part 1. Man, there's so many members, past, present, man, that I wasn't able to get everyone in this first part. Man, sure enough, I may not even be able to get everybody in part two, so there'll probably be even a part three coming soon as well. Um, I figure I've already done one on the NF Northaniel structure, right? No said awesome members. I've done one on the Aryan Brotherhood. Now it's time for me to do one on the Mexican Mafia. Like I said, one of the most powerful organizations in the United States. One of the strongest and oldest as well. So let's get to it. Here we go. I had to start this one with the man that started it. Luis Jesse Flores, also known as Weddle Buff, from Hawaiian Gardens, is one of the founding members back in 1957. This is an old school picture of M. Metals back in around 19, I believe, 65. This was in Tehachapi. Okay. The next person up is none other than Joe Pegleg Morgan. Now, there is no really true chain of authority or chain of command within the Mexican Mafia structure, but if ever there was a one that would be called the godfather it would be joe morgan and it was for a lot of what he brought in like i said he is one of the main contributors to the criminal organization and resources back in the days man and pretty much put his foot around what the mexican mafia would become even though he was very powerful there's a lot of ma members that feel that there was other ma members that were more powerful like champ renoso kilroy and a few others so here we have next is none other than Cyan Cadena, basically the one that pretty much, like I said, had a revolutionary radical ideas about the people. He died way too young. He was trying to unite all the Rasa factions. There was another picture of Joe Peleg Morgan, man in the office. Like I said, he was a businessman. People always use the comment, man, you're white, you can't speak on anything. Well, hey, look at Joe Morgan. He ran the Mexican Mafia. There he is in the background, as well as much of other Mexican Mafia members. This picture is definitely from the Mid to late 70s, I believe. There goes Champ Renoso, old school MA member. He's also one of the ones that was part of the, basically what you would call in the federal system, who held a seat in one of their governing bodies. There goes another picture of Champ Renoso as well. Well known, well established, and well respected, man. If was ever one to give Joe Morgan a run as far as who the Godfather was, it was him, most definitely. Now there goes Topo Peters, another individual from Maravilla. He had the same connects later on that Joe Morgan had, but the word was, was he wasn't able to keep them established like he should. Definitely a leader in the early years of the Mexican Mafia. Now, who do we have here next? Mon Sal. As you guys already know, he got hit in the county jail 26 times for bad-mouthing Joe Pegleg Morgan. He was another old school at Meadow as well. There goes a picture of the man who yielded power in, in Orange County for years. Sana Ojeda. Younger picture of him right there, though. There goes uh, Black Dan. This was a mentor to uh, Boxer Enriquez, believe it or not, man. This was the one that taught a lot of things Boxer learned as an in metal, as a Mexican Mafia member. There goes Mundo. A young picture of Mundo, man. <laughs> Straight murder right there, man. Mundo was definitely with the business, man. You know, he may have went out the way he went out, but it is what it is. There goes an old school picture of several MM members, including you can see Boxer Enriquez in the corner. This was taken in Folsom back sometime, I believe, in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. Jacko Padilla, I did time with this individual, man. Um, old school MM member, man. He got caught up in politics, no longer had the support that he used to have, you know what I'm saying? But he was a moneymaker for sure. And he was right there running things in Corcoran. That's Mike Boo, right? Moreno. Old school, man, right there. From Norwalk, man. But the family's been all over. Several of his brothers were also Mexican Mafia members. That's Indio in the middle. He did 42 years in Pelican Bay. <laughs> That's a long time right there, man. There goes Boo Moreno in the middle and Cricket from uh, Big Hazard on the left, man. And I think that may be little one from MS on the right. Okay, this was taken to the feds. No. You got Mula, Fox, and a few other individuals in this picture in the feds, man. This is another old school picture, man, when they were all doing time. I think, man, I think they were, I'm not sure if they were in Florence or somewhere else. Okay. 
There goes Turtle from Culture, man. Another old school fucking metal. Done a lot of time. Been involved in a lot of shit, man. Most definitely. Let me see what we got coming up next. Here comes uh, another picture of Jack Padilla. Jaquez Padilla, also known as Jackal. I remember he had a tattoo of the M.A. across his chest as well. From when I did time with him in corporate. There goes a picture of Top Loss from uh, 2003. As everybody knows, they update your picture as you get older in CDCR. So I think I have one more picture of Top Loss as well coming up right now. No, actually I have one of uh, Champ Reynoso, an older uh, picture of Champ. Yeah, this is OG right there for real, so. Anyways. There goes OG San Sana Ojeda. Probably had the longest tenure of running a certain area, right? Which was all mostly Orange County out of all these individuals, man. Here goes a picture of Donald Ramon Ortiz, little man. As you guys know, he's from Whittier, but was killed like over 20 years later. Someone finally took time to take him out. There goes a picture of Danny Roman, right? He, I think he was the first MA member that was killed. The return from the end to all hostilities, right? Which was a big deal, and it showed the power change. There goes a famous picture of Cheyenne, fucking Pay Lake Morgan, all these cats, man, all these old school M Meadows right here. This was taken, I think, back sometime around like 60, 68, 69, I believe. There goes Big D. In his later years, was one of the founders of the Mexican Mafia, man, turned pastor, was actually a real one, though, man. Respect to the things that he was able to achieve later on in his life. There goes Michael Mosca Torres. As you guys know, he was killed earlier last year in what seems to be another power struggle that's going on within the Mexican Mafia. This dude yielded a lot of power, man. Too much power, some say. Another one of Tablas as well. Old school picture right there. Tablas has a lot of power in Florence, as, as well as his brother who just passed away. He used to have a lot of power. There goes Little Man as well, um, Ramon Ortiz, right? The one that was just killed recently. I think he was killed in Corona or Chino, somewhere in that area, a few years back after being out there 20 years. Mexican Mafia crew chief, right? Albert Spanky Amaya. I think he was indicted sometime around 2013 or 14, right? Long time uh, MA member, right? At San Bernardino County. There goes a picture of Sleepy Huerta, right? One of the ones that's been having power in Southern California for years. One of its more senior members that's still in good standings, right? He recently hit the news for what? Crazy ass cases from what I heard. And there you have a former member, Boxer Enriquez, right? A lot of people may be upset that he's on this list, but he was a member at one time. Therefore, any members will make this picture list. Anyways, here we go. Man, there you go, Big Evil. As you guys know, he recently was killed out there in uh, Mexico and TJ, man. Sad situation, man. A lot of dudes like this guy, man. You know, from a lot of people I've talked to, they liked his get down. You know, there was another picture right there. Like I said, man, dude was definitely about that action, man. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? Be, being across the border is a whole different way of living, man. Trust me on that. Here goes a picture of Armando Mando, uh, Moreno, who at one time actually had a power struggle going on with uh, San Ojeda. Over a lot of territories, man, including some in Norris County. Weddle Shy, man. Another individual who had a lot of influence in the feds, right? And out there on the streets. On time MA member. Right there. There goes a picture of Sluggle. Another Mexican Mafia member out of Orange County, man. Who also went into a fucking power struggle, man. Against Ojeda, man. Ojeda raged war with a lot of other medals, right? And it did not turn out well for a lot of these individuals. Old school picture of the um, metal Weddle, man. I'm almost positive, man, me and him did time, I think, in Corcoran back in, like, 2000, I think. Sometime in the 2000s, I believe, or 90s. That right there is Puppet from 18th Street, right? Who was also one of the key individuals in um, the taxing out there in the streets. Pretty much, he had a lot of control of a lot of different areas people were hating on, right? That's the MA member, Albert Beto Vargas, man. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know him, but I believe he was from Orange County. He was a uh, part of an inner struggle as well. Old school tattoo and metal right there. That's one individual that I think is a. Uh, I'm not even gonna speak on. There goes the old man on death row right there, man. Y'all guys already know blue. 
done a lot of time, man. He was from um from from Puente, if I'm not mistaken. The OG. There goes Pilon. You guys already know he got caught up in that those murders that happened over there, man, that were under the direction of Wet Oshai. Wet Oshai, man, was actually pulling this dude out there in the streets, man. As a carnal. Wet Sherman, man. Look at Wet Sherman, there, man. He looks all puffed up, man. He's the one that did a lot of those interviews, man, for the uh, CDCR at that time, man. Anyways, got a few more left, guys. That guy right there is, man, I'm trying to think who that is right there, man. That's not Daryl. There goes Daryl right here, though. That's Dash and D. I did time with this man in Corcoran. He allegedly just passed away. They say, I don't know. I can't really validate that, man. But um, Daryl was definitely a real one. I'll tell you guys that right now. There goes Stranger. Stranger, man. As you guys already know from Rockwood. He's the one that's been famous news recently for stabbing that individual, Derek Chauvin. There goes another picture of Daryl, man. I think this may have been uh, from when he was in Corcoran, as a matter of fact. If I'm not mistaken. Frankie B. <laughs> Frankie B was looking a little wild at the end of his years, man. He was, he was uh, like, you know, liking to sport that fucking uh, long hair, man. I guess he was trying to blend in because he was up north for a long time, man. Another picture of Frankie B. They allegedly, Daryl D. has something to do with his killing is what the feds are trying to say, man. But, like I said, we don't know about anything like that over here. Anyways, got a couple of pictures left, guys. Daryl, man. Daryl Baca, man. He's part of a program up in Pelican Bay, man, trying to help people, man. So, he's kind of changed his tune, man. I don't know if that means he's not involved anymore. I mean... Sometimes in people's old age, they decide to do different things. There goes Crow, man, from Orange County, man. Recently, man, they found that his initial case that he was in prison, that he was not guilty of it, man. The course found. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in his next court case. And there goes uh, Daryl as well again, uh, Baca. He looks a lot older now, man, but he's, like I said, he's doing some positive things, you know, out there in the community. Now... Now, this is part one. Like I said, guys, there's a lot of people I've still not gotten to, right? Like Robot Salas, uh, Artie from King Cobras, and a whole bunch of other individuals, right? You know, uh, Nego from fucking Colton. There's probably, like I said, about a, at least three parts that I can do of the Mexican Mafia pictures, guys. So please bear with me. I'm going to eventually get to as many people as I can. If you guys have any pictures you guys want to send me, man, to put into uh, future uh, videos, let me know. Because I'm going to be doing part two part and part three probably in the, in the coming weeks. With that said, it's your boy Flacco from A Comics Perspective. I'm out.